opponent is not interested in objectives I just mentioned. He's more interested in scoring points, beating his chest, and basically performing to his audience. Now, this is something I have never taken part in, so it's going to be a good, good experience for myself. I do care what Muslims think of us. My whole activism doesn't rely on helping young secularists and atheists to hold on to the rope of atheistic faith. No, because once you become an atheist, you become a free thinker. You don't need Dawkins or Hitchens or me. So I don't judge the winners or losers by popular opinions of others, because in these cases, everyone vouches for their own guy, except atheists, of course, because public executions, totalitarian societies devoid of free speech and personal freedom is not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. On three of their biggest lies. Lie number one, promoters of human rights like Harris claim human rights are a beacon of hope. Human rights are the mark of civilization and progress, and everyone should adopt human rights. But is this true? 192 out of 195 countries of the world have officially adopted the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let's look at the GDP per capita. North America is at $61,000 per capita. Western Europe is at $54,000 per capita. Australia and New Zealand are at about $55,000. These regions are at the top of the heap. Latin America is less than $7,400 per capita. India, the world's largest democracy, is only at $2,000. Sub-Saharan Africa is at $1,500. Why do countries like America, UK, Britain, Australia have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the GDP per capita of countries in Latin America, Eastern Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa. Why this massive inequality? Botswana, considered one of the oldest democracies in the Southern Hemisphere, one of the earliest adopters of LGBT rights in Africa, very high female involvement with voting and politics, but it has only one-tenth the GDP per capita of the U.S. Or consider Haiti for 200 years ago. They had a female president in 1990. Their GDP per capita is 1 50th the United States. Better yet, explain why people living in human rights abiding democracies in Latin America, in Africa, are literally dying to migrate to America and Western Europe. Those countries also reported far lower happiness levels. Democracy and human rights are just a big hoax. Harris wants people to hate Islam by trying to pin the issue of poverty and social dysfunction to Muslim countries, but as we've seen, it's not a strong connection. In reality, his criticisms of Islam apply to every single religion and every traditional form of culture, because all traditional ways of life clash with modern human rights. This is because human rights is an extremist ideology. Ultimately, Harris would be lying if he said that his problem is solely with Islam. He should be honest. The problems he has with Islam violating human rights, he has with all traditional cultures and religions that limit individual liberty for the sake of protecting marriage, family, and community. Harris should be honest. Instead of saying human rights versus Sharia, he should say human rights versus literally every traditional culture and religion in the world. What is the difference between Harris Sultan and European colonizers? What is the difference between Harris Sultan and the neocons in Washington who pushed for the murderous invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan 20 years ago and continue to agitate for human rights in the Muslim world today? What is the difference? Let's call this the colonial question. All of those exact same arguments have been used by European colonizers historically against not only Muslims, but against Native American aboriginals, against the Chinese. When Harris says Muslims abuse women because they practice polygamy, that exact same argument was used by American settlers in the 18th and 19th century to dehumanize Native Americans and justify genociding them. Harris says Muslims are barbaric because they use corporal punishments against criminals. That exact same argument was used by the European colonial empire against the African tribes they genocided. Does Harris think the colonial project was a good thing? After all, colonialism was, is what brought modern human rights to all these different parts of the world. The West invading and occupying the world to bring freedom and democracy isn't something that just happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's something that's been happening for over 200 years. If Harris thinks human rights are so amazing, then does he think it was a good thing that Africa was colonized or Latin America? Does he think it was a good thing that India was colonized? Wasn't it colonialism that brought his own Muslim ancestors in the subcontinent to the light of reason and human rights? 
world is not going to freely choose human rights. History has definitively proven that, and Afghanistan is only the most recent example. Human rights destroys marriage, family, community, how it attacks every traditional way of life. You have to hide all these things because otherwise no one would buy it and actually it would make Islam look pretty good because Islam is fighting against oh, no. this human rights monster. But you can't be honest, can you, Paris? So just stop with this con game. Okay. okay. We will jump okay. the two. Right. Okay, see how nice I am, Daniel. You said yes to everything that you said so far. Yeah, I'm a sadist, apparently, so you're very nice. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, we'll I'm not seeing any emotions from you. Go ahead, Harry. Eternity later. It's so contradictory that you can't fit in fit this box in any circle. Hi. You know, in detail. We'll kick it over to Daniel for his opening state or his five minute rebuttal. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay, uh, my claim again is that liberal secular human rights regime has been a disaster for the human rights uh, race. Note that in Harris's response, he didn't address any of my questions. So we're going to see if he's going to answer anything in this debate. Like how much is too much wife beating, for example? Looks like you're gish galloping. You're just giving all of these random points. Like, can you just specify something that you want me to respond to? It seems like you're just rambling. You know, the topic of the debate is Sharia and human rights. And you're just bringing all these different theological issues. So try to focus on equality above all else is antithetical to objective family value. Family often requires you to sacrifice your own personal desires for the benefit of kith and kin. Taking care of children or taking care of the elderly are significant burdens. If you constantly tell people that maximum freedom is the most important thing above all else, it's no surprise that people will choose self-interest over family again and again. And eventually the institution of family will die off, which presumably you think is a bad thing, Harris. You might even Europe have the smallest average household sizes, whereas the Muslim world has double the household sizes sizes of the of the West. Uh, Pew Research also shows that living alone is more common in wealthier countries, especially North America and Western Europe. And we see Muslims at the opposite end of the spectrum with all of these stats. And this is because of the rules in Islamic law, rules that specify parental rights known as birr al-walidain, being good to parents, emphasized by, emphasis by the prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, so I'm going to address slavery and sex slavery, but let me just explicit for the, be explicit for the audience since, Harris doesn't see, audience, since Harris doesn't seem to be getting it. I'm arguing that Sharia uh, law is superior to human rights because Sharia rule preserves marriage and family. Okay? And human rights doesn't. It destroys marriage and family and community and the human race. That's the argument. In the past, the low level of technology meant that in order to wield political power, war was necessary, which meant that slavery was necessary. The only difference today is there are bombs, nukes, fighter jets, drones, chemical and biological weapons. So now war is not about manpower. Basically, you have to believe that these new technologies are such a blessing and we're better off because at the very least, no one needs slavery to de defend themselves, right? We live in a world of nukes and drones and weapons of mass destruction. So slavery is no longer needed. So the question is, is this actually a better world? Well, the harms associated with modern technologies like nukes and drones and mass surveillance, and you can't go to the bathroom without security agencies constantly monitoring your every move and every communication. These harms are far, far greater than the harms that existed in Islamic slavery. A couple of things, folks. Shortly, just a little bit here, we'll be going into the open dialogue and also just did a poll. Interesting to see. We asked what people identify as. We had 41% identify as Muslim, then 36% atheist, other 11%, and then Christian was 10%, which we're excited about having that kind of variety of people. We do hope you feel welcome, no matter what walk of life you're from. And with that, go ahead, Daniel, the floor is all yours for five minutes. Okay, again, um, Harris is just gish galloping. He's throwing everything out there. I'm going to actually respond with argument. We, the answer from the U.S. state is clear. They invaded and occupied for 20 years, brutal occupation. And now even after they're gone, you have uh, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State saying, we're going to agitate and we're going to pressure Afghanistan. So this is all force and it leads to suffering. You stand by all that or no? Answer. I'll, no, I'll answer that to you, but- uh, Yes or no, you, you stand me, by it or no? If you, yes if or no? you answer me, if you, it, no, it's more complicated than that. But okay. if you answer that, do you support <laughs> Taliban or not? You said brutal, you said brutal occupation. Uh, you could argue about the way the war on terror was started, but after that, 
Um, America was not there. There was no governor general of America. There, there was no America was, in there, Afghanistan? There was no government that was directly American. The government <laughs> itself was Afghan. The government was, unfortunately, unfortunately, Islam got in the way and it said, no, sorry, we want to live in the 7th century and we, we want to be ruled by warlords, terror, intimidation and fear and executions and barbarity. And but, uh, democracy has no place in Afghanistan. You, so you, what uh, policy, you didn't say that. What, what policy are you going to institute that will increase what fertility policy? rate? Well, well for, first of all, immigration is the one, one good policy and uh, we can always... Im- <laughs> Bringing in Muslims from, from other countries? Other countries. So you, know, well, you talked about you, you talked about you talked about eating animal uh, e- eating bugs. So I mean, I, so that just kind of triggered in my mind. Like, do you think snails are they halal or not? Because Sharia is a lot more complicated than that. Because dietary requirements is considered either it's halal or it's haram, and Sharia means sh- Sharia is directly linked to your morality. So you are if you follow Sharia, you're moral. If you don't, you're immoral. Eating e- eating pig would be immoral because it's written in the Quran not to do it. But what about other things like, let's say, snail or a Kangaroo, do you, do, you, do you think snail is halal? So it will depend on which school of thought that you're following. Yeah, I mean, exactly. this is not, what, are, what is your point? My, my point is that it is, it is open to interpretation. I who said that, I acknowledge that. Kinds of Agent Orange, there's children born with these kinds of huge heads. I would rather be new. I would rather be, I would rather be new than either. be enslaved for someone for 20 years. I would rather be new than be enslaved for someone for 30 years. Then be but killed by a nuclear weapon. We must yeah, I'd rather here. be killed rather than be a slave. Than be a slave. Okay. You're, again, your idol, your hero, Dawkins, he defends mild pedophilia. He says that he doesn't. I can't one, find we it must, in we're me. Not, he doesn't. Right, we have to, we, this, we're, that's bringing up he something doesn't. outside the topic question. So I do want to go to this next one. Okay. Says that puss here. I'll talk about a puss. Like he is just a con man. He has to lie like just me. like Harris to his Hindu, yeah. Hindu Dva audience. His Christian loser audience, who they <laughs> are not able to actually think for themselves, they just follow this con man. Notice, hey Daniel, how you doing? Hi, Harris, how's it going? No, if that is uh, pick even... is not all Islam. Pick <laughs> is not all Islam. I made the philosophical <laughs> arguments about it. Um, I made philosophical <laughs> arguments about God, about the existence of God. That's what I mean by that. So yeah, it's funny because the know. debate was on Sharia, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. We talked about that. And you still haven't answered snail. You just started giving a nickname of snail to him. Are snails halal and why they're halal and sharpie and not other? Any other uh, fake? Why? 